to all of you, good morning, good morning. To all of you who are visiting with us this morning, we are so grateful that you chose to come to be at Lawbridge Church on this day. We thank you for the ones who are online, that you turned on your computers and you decided to join us virtually. We praise God for each one of you. And I thank God for my church family. I just have to say this before I start. The Lord has brought me to Lovebridge Church, and he's given me a love for each one of you that goes beyond anything that I can explain. I am so grateful for all of you, for your encouragement, for your prayers, and for all that you do to bring glory and honor to the Lord. We're in the book of Acts, and we're continuing our study and I do hope that all of you have been as blessed as I have been as blessed and looking at the Word of God and how the early church responded to God's truth and responded to God's commission and responded to God's commands. It is a lesson for all of us this morning as we look in the book of Acts we don't want to get so down in the details that we don't miss the big picture. We must come to see that this book that was written by the Apostle Luke was written as a historical account of actions. Yeah. It is the book of action. It is the book of the acts of the Holy Spirit, if you really want to see it, or the acts of the apostles. God, in his wisdom, knew that after he left and arose from the grave and went to be with the Father, he had taught the disciples. He had given them everything that they needed to go forth. But the mission that he had called them to, which was to go forth and declare the truth of God's word and to establish the church in his name, required something other than that, which was the power and the authority of his name. This authority was given to them by Jesus Christ. He let them know that you haven't in the past ask anything in my name. I've been here with you, but when I leave, I'm giving you the authority. Yeah. You now can use my name, and when you use my name, it is as though I am speaking. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to see how the apostle Peter continued on believing, trusting, going, and doing exactly what Christ had called them to do. He believed what Jesus told them when he says, if you ask anything in what? In my name, I will do it. He believed that the power of God's name, Jesus' name, because Jesus told them when he was resurrected, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. And the Lord God raised him up and put him on the right hand of the Father and everything was put under the authority of Jesus. Yeah. We now, as followers of Jesus Christ, did you know, do you believe that you have that same authority? Yeah. How many of you really, really believe that? Say amen. amen. Say it again. Amen. Say it again. Amen. Because I wanted you to commit to that because you know what? You act on what you believe. If you don't believe that, if you don't have a conviction of that, when the Lord tells you to go, when the Lord tells you to go, if you truly do not believe that, you may hesitate. You may question him. You may start looking at yourself. But this morning, what we will see in all of the Acts of the Apostles, you see this word immediately immediately after Saul, which was our lesson this past week, after his conversion, this was a man who was, was persecuting the church, putting people in jail because they believed and preached and teached about Jesus. And the interesting thing was, he believed in God, but don't use that name Jesus. It was the name of Jesus that got the believers in trouble if they had continued on believing in the Jewish traditions and laws and spoke of God, the Pharisees and Sadducees would have been okay with that. Even 
Saul would have been okay. But the moment that you bring up Jesus, the moment that they began to preach and teach in the name of Jesus, what is so awesome about that name? That it would cause Saul to put you in jail. It would cause the Pharisees and Sadducees to look after and try to kill you. It's the great authority of his name, the power that's behind that name, the truth that's behind that name, and the facts that he is the one, the Messiah, the true Messiah who came to set all of us free. We find in the book of Acts, as we come into our text this morning, that Saul was the one who had been persecuted, and we studied this last week. But when he met Jesus, on the road to Damascus, his life was completely changed. And we know in this room, all of us know this, that when we met Jesus, our lives were changed. Our lives changed. It was such a blessing this morning to sit in our life transformation class. I'm putting a plug in for that class and all the classes. If you all come early, you get a chance to hear these great teachings. But the question was asked, how did, how, what drew you to Jesus? What, did, what happened to draw your heart? And it was just a blessing to listen to the members of the class give their testimony of how they were drawn to Jesus, what happened, how it was that he used people, he used their parents, he used situations to draw them. Well, Saul encountered him on the road, and he saw. He was blinded, but he was converted. He was baptized. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. All the things that we do, all the things that he does for us, we believe. We're baptized. The Holy Spirit comes and abides with each one of us. So as we look in the book of Acts, you can see yourself in these chapters. You can see yourself in these verses. You can see that the same authority, the same power that was ex exercised among the disciples, you too have that power. If you don't remember anything else I say today, the Lord wants me to make sure that you know that you have access to the power and authority that he gave his disciples, and his expectation is that you believe it and that you will use it. He doesn't just want you to know these things. He doesn't want you to just memorize what's happening in Acts. He's given this to us today because right now, any other time in our lives, we need action. We need the church to be like what we're gonna see in our first verse, a place of peace, a place where people can come, a place where the power of God is on display. Yes. If you would open your Bibles then, we're going to be looking at Acts 9, 32 to 43. And I want our focus this morning is on action. Our focus this morning is on the great authority of Jesus' name. The great authority of Jesus' name. His name is above every name. And all power and authority has been given to him. And he now has given you the right to use that name. Authority this morning is expressed in the ministry of Peter. We're going to see how this authority is used, what the result of it is, and most importantly, for us to understand that when we use this authority, when we teach, preach, heal, or whatever we do in Jesus' name, it's for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. It's for the glory of God. It has nothing to do with us, it has nothing to do with me, you, or anyone else. It's all about the glory of God, and God uses it in order to build his kingdom. If your purpose, if what you do does not fit with that, you need to examine yourself to see if you are doing this for your own personal gain, or for your own personal satisfaction, or for your own personal glory. But we know that in order for you to use this name the way Peter is using it this morning, it has to be for the glory of God, 
so that God can demonstrate his power and people can know that he is real. He is who he says he is, and he has come to give life to each one of us. So if you open your Bibles to Acts 9, 32, 43, the key points that I want us to points that I want to bring out, and I'm going to repeat these over and over. The first one is this. When I use the word authority, it is the power or ability to do something given by, conferred by, upon, and it's derived from God. So the word authority in scripture, you'll see the word authority and power interchanged from the Greek word. But if I say the word authority, I'm saying power, power and authority. You have power, you have authority, and it's been derived from God. It's given to you for a specific purpose, it's conferred upon you, given to you, in order for you to do something for him, for his kingdom. We're going to see that spiritual authority is that ability. When I say the word spiritual, it's your ability, it's your right, a power to do something. And the something that you're going to do is what God has called you to do. But one of the key things that we see from Peter this morning is the fact that he was obedient. Obedience to God is the source or the root of this spiritual authority. You can have this authority, but if you're not obeying God, if you're not abiding in him, then you can be like the ones that you're going to see later on in Acts. They saw the apostles using that name and thought that they could use it too. The, the sons of, what were their names? Eva. Eva. That they wanted to use that name. They didn't have the authority. They didn't have the power. They weren't obeying God. They didn't even know who God was, but they wanted to get fame. It didn't work for them, did it? We'll be covering that in another week, so I won't tell you all that happened. But just letting you know that it is obedience to God. Peter uses this spiritual authority this morning, and the result is this. God is glorified, and a whole city is saved. That's the purpose, you all. It's for God to be glorified and people are saved. We're going to go now into Acts 9, and we'll start at verse 31. So I'm going to try to explain the chapter of verses as we go along. Last week, the pastor ended on this particular verse. He covered the verses beforehand. It ended with Acts 9, 31. Would you go to Acts 9, 31? The church then had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria. And it became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. And with the encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it also grew in numbers. So as we start our text this morning, we're reminded that the people had obeyed God. They told him to stay in Jerusalem, Samaria, and Judea. The Holy Spirit came and the church grew. Persecution was still there, but you see what it says in this verse. Peace was in the church. It was persecution on the outside, but peace was inside the church. The people there had come to know what it meant to strive for the unity of the peace of God. The peace of God kept the people in the church together. They loved each other, they prayed together, they fellowshiped together. And the peace of God that passes all understanding is what kept them. Even though there was persecution from the outside, inside, the peace that he's talking about here is the peace that God had given to them. The thing that was interesting too, it says they became stronger as the believers lived in the fear of the Lord. They were not afraid of God. They reverenced him. They respected him. They committed themselves to him. And as a result of that, the Holy Spirit was there constantly encouraging them. And this, to me, is what caused them to grow. Because it says here that it also grew in numbers. So we see from this, just this verse, that as a church, if we are going to grow, 
then we must also live in the fear of the Lord. We must be encouraged by the Holy Spirit. We must fight to keep unity and peace among us. And that's when we see ourselves growing. I thank God for this church. I thank him for the peace and the unity that he has placed here. Like the pastor says all the time, we may not agree, we may not get along, but the one thing we do know, we all love Jesus. And we trust him to be the one to keep each one of us. We thank God for the diversity. We thank God for all of us coming from different backgrounds. But we are trusting God at this church under the leadership of our pastor that we would also be a church of peace, be a church where there's unity, a church where we glorify God in everything that we say and do. So we know the condition of the church is growing. And wouldn't it be, and I'm I'm not going to say this about Peter, but I'm going to ask you, you're in a city and the church, God has placed you in a church and it's growing and everything is going well, the ministries are growing. And then the Lord keeps reminding you, I told you that you have to go beyond Judea, Samaria, and Jerusalem. It's time for you to go beyond that. Now be honest, as the pastor always says, be honest. Um, would you be ready to leave a church that's thriving and everybody is getting along and there is no dissension and people are just praising and having a great time in the Lord? And then the Lord said, no, you need to continue on obeying me and go. Everybody who would be willing to go because Jesus said, go, raise your hands. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but anyway. (laughs) But if you think about this, Peter didn't hesitate. He kept moving. He kept moving because he went back to Acts 1, 8, when Jesus told them, I am sending power, the Holy Spirit, upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. This morning, Peter continues in obedience, and that's the key, in obedience to God. So let's just look and see what happens with Peter in his obedience and his using of that great name, using the authority that was given unto him What's going to happen? Let's look at verse 32. Meanwhile, Peter traveled from place to place, and he came down to visit the believers in the town of Lydda. The town of Lydda. So Peter is leaving Jerusalem, and he is going to Lydda. It's interesting, I googled Lydda and tried to find out how far is that from Jerusalem. I got two different answers, you all. Okay, one answer said 23 miles, and the other one said 52. So we'll just say he had a long way to walk in order to get to Lydda, okay? (laughs) But you notice that he goes from place to place, and has he gotten anything from God as to say, when you go there, this is what you're to do? No. He's just going because God said what? Go. Go. Remember what you said earlier, that you believe, that you have the authority, you believe these things, and I said, when you believe it, you will act. Peter is acting. He's going from place to place. He decides now to go visit some friends down in Lydda. And when he goes there, something happens. We never know what God has for us when we obey. We never know what it is he needs from us if we obey. See, I I love the Lord in this respect. He wants us to come to focus totally on him, not on what we're doing, not on what he's called us to do, not on our gifts, but strictly on him. Because all it would take for Peter to go was that Jesus said to go. All it would take for any of us to go It's because Jesus said to go. It doesn't matter what it is that you think you may be doing or have to do. No, that's not the issue. Can you hear his voice when he says, go, and will you go? Just because he said it. That's what we were singing about this morning. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. 
It's not about me trying to use my gifts. It's not about me trying to figure out what you want me to do. It's about you. You're worth it. If you tell me to go, I go because you said it. I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know what's going to happen. But the one thing I do know, one thing all of us know, that he promised that he would never what? Leave us. He would never leave us. And the other thing we know him is Jehovah Jireh. He says he goes ahead of us. And before we get there, he's already there. Before we get there, he's already there. And whatever it is that needs to be worked out, <clears throat> he's already worked it out. We are so grateful this morning, thank you, that Peter demonstrates to us his obedience. And when he gets there, let's see what he finds in verse 33. He meets a man called Aeneas. Aeneas. Aeneas is his name. This man had been paralyzed and bedridden for over eight years. God didn't tell Peter, I'm sending you down there to meet this man. He just went. He was visiting friends. And then here he has a special assignment. He then goes and Peter sees him. In verse 34, he said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your sleeping mat. And he was healed immediately. Instantly, he was healed. Peter wanted to make sure that Aeneas understood that it was the name, it was Jesus that was doing the healing. He says, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up. When he got up, he was healed instantly. Peter was familiar with this. This wasn't a territory that he was walking in and had not experienced this, not seen this before. We know that he saw Jesus do the very same thing when they brought the paralyzed man to him in Matthew 9, 6 and 7. He says, so I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And that's when Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up. Just like Peter says this morning, get up. Jesus told him to stand up. Peter was there with the Lord. So this wasn't anything new to Peter, but now Peter was the one having to do this. We also know that Peter did the same thing when he met the man at the, the pool called Beautiful. He told him, he says, I don't have any silver or gold, but I'll give you what I have. And what did he say? In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, get up and walk. The name of Jesus, get up. The power and the authority behind that name caused them to get up. They got up, and then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up as he did. This is what he did in Acts 3, 7. And he doing, he's doing the very same thing today. When he said that, he says, let's look at verse 35. He was healed instantly. And then the whole population of Lydda and Sharon saw Aeneas walking around. And what happened? They turned to the Lord. They turned to the Lord. If we go back to my key points, I just want to reiterate and show you that the authority of the power that Peter used was in Jesus' name. He says, by Jesus' name. Jesus is the one that's healing you. It's not me, it's Jesus. 
Peter used his spiritual authority, and he used his gift of healing. And I want to just say this, that when God, when the Holy Spirit came, he gave each person a gift, and he's given you a gift. And the way that we demonstrate our power, the power that's in us through the Holy Spirit, is for those gifts to be used for the edification of the church. For the gifts to be used, like Peter used them this morning, he had the gift of healing. And because he had that gift, we see he speaks to the man, and the man then gets up and is instantly healed. You must come to understand this, is that the true ministry is using the gift the Holy Spirit gives to you to manifest the power of God in your life. If God gives you a gift of service and you just sit and don't use it, how is it that the power of God is going to be demonstrated in your life? If God gives you the gift of teaching and you say, well, you know, I, I know God has given me that gift, but there's no but because it's not your gift. It is the Holy Spirit's gift and he needs for you to use it in order for the church to be glorified, in order for God to be glorified and the church to be edified. So Peter uses the gift. So we talk about the power of God in our lives. How do we demonstrate that power? By obeying and using the gifts that God has given us. Peter obeyed. And obedience to God is the source and root of that spiritual authority. And what was the result of what Peter did? God was glorified, Aeneas is healed, and a whole town is saved. So it really is all about Jesus, you are. It's all about him. The healing was a demonstration to the people that the risen Jesus Christ, the one who had just rose from the grave, was working in and through the disciples. He did not leave them alone. He went with them. The Holy Spirit was there, was doing the same works that Jesus had done. Because of this healing, the word spread now to Joppa. Because he was obedient, he was used. The word spreads to Joppa. And we find that Peter now is going to be called to Joppa. Peter was just going where God told him to go. Peter was just visiting friends, and now he has an opportunity to use this gift of healing, and a whole town is saved. Do you see how important it is for us to hear God, to believe what he's saying, to obey him, and to act on what we believed? People are saved. People are healed. People are set free because of the obedience of us, obedience of Peter. Let's continue on and see what else Peter finds as he travels and continues to obey God. Let's look at Acts 9.36. We find that the news about Peter doing this healing gets all the way to Joppa. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in the Greek is Darkus. And she was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in the up rooms, upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydda. Look how the word spreads. Look how the word spreads. Look how being obedient to God can cause another town to be impacted by what you do. So they went, sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter turned, returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him all the coats and other clothes that darkness had made for them. But Peter asked them all to leave the room. Then he knelt and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. He spoke her name. 
And she got up. The power that's in that name, the power of, G of, of God that he raised her. And this was not new either to Peter. Because you know when the Lord had to heal Jairus' daughter, it was the same situation. And he took Peter, James, and John into the room with him. Jesus put all the people that were mourning outside, the very same thing that Peter is doing. He put them outside, and Jesus went to Jairus' daughter and called her name, and she got up. He, Jesus told them, she's not dead, she's asleep, and she got up. Peter knew and had experienced this. This wasn't anything strange to him. God had prepared him. Jesus had prepared him to be able to do all that we see him doing this morning. He saw Jesus do it. He experienced it in Jerusalem. And now he is in Joppa and Lydda, doing what God had prepared him to do. The news spread through the whole town. And we're now on verse 20, 42. And many believed, many people believed because of the miracles that was there. Peter stayed a long time in Joppa, living with Simon the Tanner of Hides. The miracles that we saw happening this morning are the same things happening today. This is not anything that happened over 2,000 years ago. This is happening today. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is still in the healing business. We still have the right to use the authority of his name, and he still heals. We have examples right here in this church. When we had our Women's Day luncheon a few a months ago, we had individuals like Sister Shirley giving her testimony of how the Lord healed her daughter when all the doctors said that it couldn't happen. But she stood firm on what she believed, trusting God, and God healed her daughter. We have people on our prayer list that we've been praying for, and we see God work in people's lives where he raises them up and he heals them. God heals. He is Jehovah Rapha, the one that heals all of our diseases. He promised us that by his stripes we are healed. Peter demonstrated to us this morning by the authority of the name of Jesus that he heals. We use that name. We call him that name. The great authority of his name, he says, if you call on my name, you shall be saved. Darkness was raised from the dead. I want you to tell you this, is that God can do that. It's not anything that's beyond his ability. He is able to do that. We saw him raise up Lazarus. We saw him raise up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And many people today, because we don't see it happening right now, but it doesn't say, God says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing is too hard for him. But the one thing that we can show in, in Darkness' case, the disciple was demonstrating that God had taken the, the power out of death. He took the power out of it. He now had authority over death. He demonstrated, I have authority over death. The scripture says there's no death. Where is your sting? Where is your victory? Where is it? No longer do you have it because now when Jesus got up, all authority in heaven and earth and even over death was taken away. Death was a torment to some of the people. The people that were in that room were mourning, weeping because they felt, a lot of them believed that there was nothing else after death. They didn't know. But he had demonstrated this morning, oh no, there is life after death and Jesus can raise him up. But the thing of it is, is we know, we know also that there is life after death. We have eternal life, and God has promised us that you that believe in me, there is life. Peter Paul says it best, to me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. When I'm absent from the body, I'm what? Present with the Lord. It was kind of interesting. I thought about this. I said, Lord, was the darkest left her body as she got up there with you? Would she have wanted to come back down here? I don't know. I don't think I would have, but anyway. 
<laughs> for the glory of God, for the glory of God. If a people get saved, sometimes the Lord will send you back. He'll send you back because he still hasn't finished with you. We are so grateful this morning that God has given us this demonstration of his power to remind us this morning that he is in the healing business, to remind us this morning that death has no authority. He is the one that gives life. And because of who he is, he, is, he has given us eternal life. And that life is in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have the authority, you all, the power and the ability to do that all that God has called you to do. Yes. Your true ministry to demonstrate this power is for you to obey, and to trust him, yes. and to act on what you believe. All of you told me when I first started this sermon that you believed that you had the authority. Yes. You believe. Yes. And because you believe, I'm excited about what God's gonna do in this church in this body. Amen. All the miracles, Amen. all the healings, yes. all the things that he will do. And what I mean by miracles, I'm talking about the miracle of the fact I myself am a miracle because he saved me. Amen. All of us that have been saved, it's a miracle because yes. we were dead huh. in trespasses and sin. Yes. We were in darkness. Yes. And he's the one that came and snatched us out of the jaws of hell. And he brought us from death to life. Yes. He raised us up from death to life. He took us out of darkness and gave us life. And he does the same thing in our lives. We may face situations that may seem impossible. But Jesus... There is nothing too hard for him. Amen. I have seen him in my life, and you've seen too, how you have looked at situations that seem to be dead, huh. and God would bring it to life. Yes. Yes. Marriages that seem to be on the rocks and getting ready to die, God brings it to what? Life. Amen. Relationships. Relationships that you think is just in families that have just been over, but God what? brings it to life. It's not just raising people from physical death. He raises us from the death of sin. And that is, to me, the greatest miracle. So this morning, as we close, I do pray that you will take the first step of belief, that you believe that Jesus Christ came and that he died on the cross, that he was buried, that he rose again, and because of his resurrection, you now have access to this authority. Yeah. You now have access to use the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because when you accept him as your personal savior, he puts a seal on you. You are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And you know in the old days when they put a seal on a, lamp, on a, on a, on a letter, it gave that person that had that letter the authority to use that letter. When he puts that seal on you, you have the authority to use his name. You are his representative, and you can use his name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you can speak life into dead situations. In the name of Jesus, you can speak life. You can cause demons to flee. In the name of Jesus, the scripture says that a thousand could, a one could put a thousand to flee. Two of you could put 10,000 to flee. There is no reason for us to be afraid of or concerned with what Satan and his minions are doing because we have the authority of Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So if you want that authority, we ask that you would come as the counselors come and give your life to him. Submit to his authority. So that you can walk in the authority that he died on the cross for you. Don't allow his death to be in vain, you all. He came that we may have this life, that we may have the power to use his name so that he could be glorified. The world needs to know that God is real today, you all. There is so many people out there that do not understand and know that he is real. 
And it's our responsibility as his representative, as the ones who have the seal on us, to go forth and proclaim the truth of who he is. For you who need a church home this morning, come join us over here. <laughs> come join us over here. We'd love to have you. We, 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 we just, we love the Lord, y'all. We, we love him. We love his word. We love our pastor. We love the people that the Lord has sent here. We thank God for every last one of you that he has sent. Because it's in that name that we've been praying, we've been trusting God, that everybody that comes in here, you just like Peter, you have an assignment. You do. And we're here to encourage you and to help you to find that purpose and that assignment. So please come. If you need prayer, we believe in prayer in this church. We pray for each other. As I said, we've seen so many wonderful things that the Lord has done in people's lives and healing and touching, getting people out of the bed when they couldn't get out, but they're now here and with us. Praying for those who were with us and went away and God sends them back. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, you are. In the name of Jesus. So as the prayer counselors come, I just ask that you who need prayer, you need a church home, or you need to be saved, please come as the praise teams come.